Facebook. Okay. We're live. We're live. Uh, <laughs> I we haven't gone live very frequently. We've only uh, maybe twice, two times. Maybe two times that we've gone live on our on our journey here, but um, we're now we're now six months in, so we figured it was time to go live, and so we're live on TikTok and on Instagram yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, using the two of our phones. So we're going to try to keep up with any questions that you guys have. Yeah, this is primarily supposed to be Q&A. Mostly Q&A. We do have a few things that we'll talk about um, as we go, but ultimately Q&A style will be awesome if you guys would help out and give us some questions. But as everybody's jumping on, um, I figured we might be able to tell you a little about uh, where we've been, some of the best things we've seen and done. Um, like I said, this is six, we, we're now six months and three days into this. Right. And so six months. Our favorite national park, that seems to be something our family asks a lot. Um, favorite national park for you? Um, I, man, it's such a hard decision. I think I've landed on Badlands. Yeah, I, th I think we agree with that. Uh, Badlands National Park was super awesome. Yeah, super cool. And what I really liked about it was the ability that we had to like explore in the national yeah. park. Um, they encourage you going off of the trail, which is so different than like every other national park. Yeah, all everywhere we've been, all the national parks, it's like you know, stay on the trail, which is like we understand it, we get yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, there's a question that popped up. Oh, question. How much does it cost to fill up the tank? Um, filling up the tank in this, it really just depends on where we're at, but let's assume uh, fuel is at $5 a gallon. We have a 166-gallon fuel tank, and so you can do the math there with uh, 166 gallons at $5 a gallon. Uh, it's, it's not cheap, yeah. but we also, I try to fill up, you know, when we're at three, three quarters of a tank, so, so I don't... That way it doesn't hurt as much every time. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and we don't move the bus very frequently. Right, yeah. So we're we're typically staying parked for two to four weeks at a time right now. Yeah. Um, which that also means that we're, we're saving money because we're not moving as frequently. And so, um, Eric, how is everybody? I think we're all doing okay. Kids, you doing okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. So some of them are coloring right here behind me. Uh, obviously, some of the kids down here with us. So, and... Uh, yeah, National Parks, Badlands was our favorite. Uh, another question we get asked when it comes to like places we've been is our favorite state park. Now right. we've we've been to a few. <laughs> so we were moving really fast when yeah. we first started, and we've like kind of really fast. Yeah, we yeah. slowed it down to the two to four weeks per stop. But um, in that in our six months, we've been to like twenty something states now. Yeah, a lot of. How about school for the kids? I'll get to that one in just a second. School for the kids. Um, so we've done a lot of state parks, and I think we we have two that are that we really loved. Yeah, yeah. that we loved. We go back to for sure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so for me, my my absolute favorite state park uh, was Custer State Park, and that was a giant state park. And yeah. that is that's in near Rapid City, South Dakota. Um, and I really loved Watkins Glen in Watkins Glen, New York. Yeah, the gorge there, that yeah. hike was, was fantastic. Was, yeah, it was it was incredible. Uh, where will be, we be for Christmas? We So we don't really announce where we're going to be uh, just out of safety for our family, but we are uh, we're going to be spending Christmas with family. And so um, we'll be parked near near some of our some of our family, which will be great. Um, homeschool. Somebody asked about school for the kids. Um, so right now we're in a kind of a transition period. We're looking into different types of online schools because what we're doing is not, we don't love what we're doing. Um, but I think it's working out okay. Um, we have, um, we do workbooks and stuff with the kids every day. We're trying to just instill a love of learning and more of an unschool approach. Um, they still have workbooks and they still have, we still read, we read daily with the kids every day. Um, age appropriate books. Um, we, we are go to all sorts of science museums and things like that. And, and they get, they get so much, they absorb so much at this age of things that you wouldn't be surprised that they just pop up with information about. Yeah. So a lot of their learning is, is kind of directed on their own. Yeah. Um, obviously with the input from us to make sure they're getting 
the learning and everything that they need. Uh, somebody else here asks, uh, any tips on keeping a small space like that clean with the family living in it? Uh, routines and schedules yeah. and assignments. Um, I Another TikToker mentioned that she had her kids do the same chore for a year at a time and um, that way that they get really, really good and really quick at the thing and that's what we've been trying to do but it's it's still really hard, guys. It's kind of hit and miss. Yeah, so some, some weeks we were really good at it and sometimes I'm like, I just lose it and we are all are cleaning all day long. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a tiny space. There's like 450 square feet here. There's eight of us living in here. Um, so like, the broom is sitting out here, right? Now, not, not everything always gets put away. It, it is a, a lived-in space. Um, yeah. So we try to make sure we keep it clean. Uh, but, you know. Also, not having a lot of things. Like, we really we really do yeah. not have a lot of things. I mean, there are some things that we're still trying to figure out how to pare down on that we just don't know, like, what we need to keep and what we don't need to keep. But there's several spaces that I think can stay pretty clean solely on the fact that we have only what we need in those spaces. Yeah, um, and so so that's the hard part for me. Uh, obviously, many of you don't know me, uh, but I'm a I'm a natural hoarder. Give me one second, because this is TikTok's telling me to do something. Okay, so I'm a natural hoarder, um, and I know that about myself. I like to hold on to things. I have a really hard time getting rid of things, and so on the bus, uh, actually living in the small space, it, it has still been difficult to try to get rid of things that we no longer use or need. Um, oftentimes for me, I just see the money flowing out if we're throwing something away. I'm like, oh, I paid money for that, yeah. you know. Um, but we, we have had to come to the reality of certain things. It's like, we, we don't use that. We don't need it. I'm six months on the road. We haven't touched it. Um, there's no reason to keep it, keep it on the bus. And so that's kind of where I'm like, you know, I'm learning to, to keep things, uh, less. Right. It's hard. Uh, yeah. It's a, it, it's a transition, guys. I don't think people realize how big of a transition it is. Yeah, it has definitely been um, been a, a transition. Are you still into racing and street cars? Um, Obsidian, I do not know who you are, but I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I love racing and street cars. I don't have any. I mean, right, that, right now. that was actually one of the difficult things giving up. We were talking about earlier things that. Um, difficult to give up, yeah. We've given up that we don't have anymore. And for me, it was actually my truck. Um, yeah. I, we ha I haven't had my motorcycles for a few years. We got rid of, rid of my motorcycles. I had three of them. Got rid of those after I had my motorcycle accident when Abraham, shortly after Abraham was born. Um, yeah. And then I had I had a, a Jeep and a truck, and, and getting rid of the truck was... Yeah, that was... I, I missed my truck. Yeah. It was big, lifted, you know, all the fancy whatever yeah. and then my my nephew has a uh, a really nice really nice mustang oh yeah uh, -huh. uh super nice mustang and so i kind of miss not uh, not being able to hang out oh obsidian jason <laughs> okay i do know who jason is um yeah so yes jason i am still into uh into racing and, and yeah. street cars and things like that not as much as when we were teenagers jason and i um grew up together yeah. Jesse, Jason's brother, was best man at my wedding. So um, <laughs> that, that gives you some idea. Of, I do know who that is. Um, all right. What else we got on here? I'm not seeing any additional questions come in. I, I think we might have missed some on Instagram. Did we miss some over here? Yeah. Okay. Like I said, this is this is like first, second time we've done this. Oh, how do we receive physical mail and packages? So we are looking into getting escapees. I think that's going to no, be... No, we have it. Oh, we have escapees. Uh, but we, I don't think we have a mail service yet, do we? I haven't set up the mail service because we haven't needed to yet. Yeah, but we're, we're soon to, because of changing scenarios, we're soon to need to set up our escapees. And they scan your document, anything that you want opened, and they'll scan it to you. And we have a family member who is currently doing that for us. Yeah, so right now what we do, we have all of our mail um, sent to a family member. And then that family member, if it looks important or if it's something I know I've been waiting on, they'll just scan it for us and, and email it to me or, or they'll just take a picture and, and yeah. text it over to me. Um, and then packages, we use a lot of different things for packages. Again, mostly uh, packages are going to family members. I've got family throughout the country. So packages will go to family members if we know we're going to be by them. Yeah. The RV parks that we stay at uh, typically yeah, don't have... 
Um, the only thing with that is sometimes there's a fee associated it. So definitely, I mean, the only reason I think on a couple of them that like we did it when there was a fee was because it was a child's birthday and it was like we couldn't find it locally. So it was like. Yeah. So I think it was really just one RV park that charged like $5 per, per package, per package yeah. unless it was specifically RV or medically related. So yeah, we've just, we've definitely taken a, um, just careful on, on that type of thing. Hey, Jen and Kyle. I just saw you guys over there. Uh, so, uh, Red, White, and Bethune has joined us. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's that's how we get packages. They and, oh, we also use a Amazon boxes. Yeah. Uh, so the Amazon has like pickup locations everywhere. A lot Walmarts of Walmart's and, have them, yeah. And stuff. So we use we use those type of services. Yeah. All right. What else we have? Did I miss any others? I don't know. Um. Well, while I scroll through these and kind of look for some of these questions, yeah, let's talk about we talk about our favorite state parks, favorite national parks, um, museums. Okay, so, <laughs> man, I love museums. I've had a lot of really positive experiences with the museums that we went, went to. But we recently went to uh, the Barber Museum, which is a motorcycle and road car, I guess, museum. Yeah, it's a, a motorsports. Yeah, and it was so incredible. And we had the education um, liaison. Is that, I don't know what their title is. Yeah, um, had come with us through the museum, so we kind of got a tour of the museum, um, and there was it was it was just an incredible. It was so beautiful. Like the museum itself was a beautiful, beautiful museum, and there was a ton, a ton to see, but it was also displayed in a way that you. It was just awesome. Yeah. yeah, and for me, I think we have we have visited a lot of museums. We have a yeah. lot of museum memberships, so it's it's kind of a, a typically a free thing to do. We go to museums. We've been to a lot of the Smithsonian's, which we are personally not big fans of. Um, and the, yeah, the Barber Motorsport Barber Vintage Motorsports Museum, um, they just blew us away. It yeah. was better than better than any Smithsonian we've been to. Better than any. You know, Natural History Museum, all the museums we've been to, Barber Vintage Motorsports Museum in Birmingham, Alabama, takes the cake. Yeah, and I, I partially I feel like it takes the cake because it is like the design of the museum was just like, it just made it, you know. It was ar architecturally stunning anyways. Yeah. The, the museum itself was fantastic. Yeah. Um, so somebody asked if all this travel makes us want to move to another state. Um, that's one of the reasons that we kind of wanted to do this is that we wanted to experience life in a lot of different states. Um, yeah. and so, yeah, maybe one day we will move to another state. Um, some of these states up north, we really loved and thought it was really beautiful and really incredible. And we've had really positive experience with the people who live there, but... Uh, but we experience them in the summer. And not in the snow. <laughs> so... We're, we're not, we're not big on the snow. Yeah. So... I'm, I'm from Missouri, Dina's from Utah, and together we're from Texas, right? Yeah. So we, we've, we've had kind of a variety of experiences growing up different places, uh, but absolutely traveling around does uh, make us feel like maybe we could um, end up somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, for us, I think the biggest and most important thing, wherever we end up, uh, is always going to be family. And yeah. whether, whether that's now or later, you know, the family is always going to be the most important thing that we do, the most important yeah. thing that we that we are around and we surround ourselves with. So, uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot of family in South Dakota, so I probably won't wind up there even though I love South Dakota. Yeah, South Dakota was incredible. Um, yeah, not you know, I would, I would move closer to family. Now, one thing with that, I'm, I'm going to mention here real quick, give a hint into or some direction into what we're going to do with our YouTube channel. And we'll be, spit, we'll be sharing quite a bit more about genealogy and, and family connections as we continue to travel. So something we're gonna try to do on our YouTube channel is, uh, is to show everybody how we're related to those around us. Now we've tried this now at a few different places. I even tried it today. Um, and uh, so we, we use a, a program on my phone and we can actually find out how closely related we are with the people we're around. And so I can literally, I could talk to you. If I met you at an RV park, I can talk to you. We can find out how closely we re related we are. And what we've found is that uh, we're related to everybody. Right. And, and ultimately, that's, to us, that's so cool, right? Yeah. We, yeah, yeah, We build those connections right away. And so that's really, really fun. And so family is key. Um, let's see, what other questions we have here? 
and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sure as I've been going up in these questions, I'm sure I've missed some now that are a little lower. So let me drop down here and see if we've got any new questions that have come in. All right, what's the next stop ahead in the future for you guys? Um, we don't share where we're headed towards. Yeah, just for safety of our family and our kids. Uh, you know, we roll into town, you'll see us, but uh, we don't share where we're going. Happy to share where we've been, though. Yeah. And so we have been uh, traveling the East Coast, uh, unexpectedly traveling the East Coast, yeah. and, uh, and we are not currently on the East Coast, though. Yeah. So uh, our next... Our next spot is going to be near near some family, um, not on the East Coast. I, I don't I don't want to. I'm not I'm not trying to sound cryptic, right? But yeah. we just don't share our exact location. I'm, I know that there are people, and you could probably find it. I'm sure people have commented that they've seen our bus where it currently is, and uh, you know, we're. we're we're headed out. Someone has asked us to show our bedroom, and it is currently under renovation. <laughs> so there is going to be a reveal in the next wee bit, but we're not sure when. Yeah, so we'll be revealing our new bedroom. We had to rip out the old bedroom uh, yeah. for the master bedroom. I know a lot of people really loved that folding bed. Uh, it was really poorly built, and yes. as we've discussed in the past, the build was not uh, great quality. So that was really poorly built. We ripped it out, found tons more issues as we ripped it out. <laughs> yeah. um, and so we're currently rebuilding the, the master bedroom area. So can't show you that just yet, but we will soon. All right, what else we got here? Uh, let's see. Sorry guys, I scrolled way up. All right, does all this travel make you consider moving after two years, after the two years. We just kind of... Yeah, I think kinda, we talked about yeah, that a little yeah. bit. Um, and of course, two years was the original plan because uh, we wanted to do two weeks in every state. Yeah, but like we found that we kind of want to go back to some places. So we think it's going to be two years. It's probably going to be end up being closer to probably two and a half years. But um, it just depends on... I mean, we're, we reevaluate every six months. Yeah, Yeah, and so this is kind of our six-month reevaluation, and that, that's a great question to lead into then that answer. And, and uh, yeah, we are going to continue yeah. on our journey here. So we've made it six months. I think if you'd have asked us uh, just six weeks ago. It was like, it was still in the, up in the air at that six point. Six weeks ago, we were up in the air. Um, we've had some really hard things happen, some hard yeah. times. Um, it, not just the bus, but you know, financially with the, some of the repairs that have been crazy expensive. And fortunately, we did have a little bit of a, a nest egg for some of that. We had kind of planned on it. Yeah. But then we've had uh, some unexpected emergencies. We had a trip to the ER that we uh, obviously couldn't have planned for or expected. Um, we've had, uh, yeah, just, just other things. We've had pipes break. I'm not a plumber and we've had a, you know, some the pipes. Same, yeah. We've had the same part break twice. Yeah. And that was a nightmare, but I've yeah. learned how to fix it now. Um, we had the, the electrical fire yeah. from, from the, the builder. Um, that really hurt us. We had, uh, the black tank. We had a full black tank while we were driving. I didn't... We don't have black tank sensors. We don't have any sensors. Yeah, um, so that's yeah. that's neither here nor there. But uh, we don't have black tank sensors. So as we were driving, we just caught wind of it. And... It, it, like, it, it all of a sudden smelled like really, really bad, and we're like, that's not normal. <laughs> so that's been that's been a little rough. It's a small area. Um, we had a blown tire on the van. That was so lots of things of just like, yeah. man, they were rough. But about six weeks ago, about six weeks ago, we um, we really met some friends. Yeah. And I think we really started making those relationships. Well, and there was there was other things too. It's like we um, I laid down to bed one night, and it was the first night. It, but it been it was a while. It was the longest I think it ever been to moving to a home. Um, like, you know, when you move to a home, it doesn't feel like you're home yet. And then one day it just feels like home. I laid down and I felt like I was laying down at home at home and like things started to change from there. Yeah. At, at that point we kind of, and we, it was, we basically had the same spirit experience within a week and then we started making friends and it just accelerated it. Yeah. Well, and, and not just that, but we went to a couple events. Yeah. Uh, like the, the Lippert, uh, the Lippert getaway we went to and met some really, really great friends and. Those kind of things. I think for me, the big change was that Lippert, uh, Lippert event about five weeks ago. 
where it just totally changed my mindset of this is something I can definitely do. There are other people out here with uh, doing this with us. So, yeah. um, the fire, yeah, the fire was caused by an electrical issue. The uh, the builder that we had hired used a lot of the wrong gauge Stuff wiring up. throughout and wired things all incorrectly and backwards, and you know, it w wasn't pretty. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's see here. Any other questions? And I do appreciate you guys jumping on while, you know, the Chiefs game is going on. Um, <laughs> let's see. Do we use Harvest Hosts? Yes, we have. We have used Harvest Hosts. We are Harvest Hosts members. We are still learning how to boondock. It is definitely a, a challenge beyond just being in an RV park. Yep, yep. Um, here's a, a question, and this one's only going to pertain to those of you that are members of, of the same church we go to. We are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And uh, for that, we have uh, we keep records, and so our records stay in our home ward back in Texas. Uh, so we, we left our records right where they were um, for everything. We go back there at least once a year um, to just make sure everything is still good with that. So um, SC Pearson's, that is your answer for that. Um, one, how do we do health insurance? Two, how do we have a loan time? Um, I don't know what they mean by alone time, but okay. Well, I know what they mean by alone time, but um, so health insurance is still handled uh, the same way we've always done it because I'm a freelancer uh, primarily, so we just we have health insurance on our own, um, just the way most anybody that is uh, self-employed or whatever would do. And then uh, alone time, well, kids typically go to bed uh, by eight, eight thirty, and we're adults, so. Uh, we can have our uh, alone time and adult time uh, after the kids go to bed. Um, so not, not much to say about that. It is uh, now I expect it will maybe be a little bit different. When when we had that bed that folded up, it created a complete separation yeah. uh, between the kids' we're, rooms. We're trying to find a way to, to, and, to do that again, but it's become, it's a little bit more difficult than yeah, we thought it was so we're, we're working on that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's see. I do appreciate all these questions coming on. Uh, let's see. Any plans to venture to Canada? Not currently. Not currently. Um, I know that they have done some restrictions uh, lifted, but I'd like to, to see some more restrictions lifted before we try and venture up to Canada. Like, all right. As in crossing the border and things that are just weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so how far in advance do we reserve reservations uh, for RV parks. Well, um, there's really two methods on RVing. Either you got to do it six months out or you do it last minute, last minute. And we are last minute planners. We're last minute. Even, guys. even getting two year week reservations is 100% possible last minute. And we are, we schedule like a week out, maybe within a few days of us leaving our current campsite. So, uh, where we're going to be, we're today's Sunday. We're going to move again on Thursday. I booked our next place yesterday. Uh, you know, so I booked it yesterday, so just six days out. And then the last place we were at, I actually, we were at the last spot for one month, and I booked that spot 30 minutes before we got there. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, it was not, yeah. It was not very. <laughs> it was not very long. So I knew where we were kind of headed, and so I went ahead and, um, and booked that. For all you Chiefs fans, um, I guess I won't spoil the ending of the game, but I'm not happy. <laughs> um, so yeah, we we kind of are last minute when it comes to booking. That's that's how we do. Yeah. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, how far in advance do we do reservations, and do we use Harvest Host again? Yeah, and Harvest Host, you can be super last minute too. We're we're pretty last minute. We've used Harvest Host, I think, twice, once, twice, yeah. something like that. Um, the reason you want to do that is is you're essentially waiting for people to cancel their reservation, and people do end up canceling their reservations quite frequently, as it turns out with RVing. So yeah, so uh, th this is a great question. Somebody asked, um, okay, but first let's smoke. They have said, uh, do you have to do you have to eat out a lot, or do you like to cook in the RV? Um, that's one of our big things is when we vacation, we eat out, but so on days that we would call a vacation day, like an adventure day, a mm -hmm. lot of times we do eat out on those days. Um, just as more convenient. We'll do normally do like one packed lunch and one, 
out to dinner or out to lunch lunch or out to, <laughs> out to eat. Oh, sorry there. Um, but typically we eat at home and I make dinner at home every night. Yeah, so majority of the time uh, cooking is happening in the RV or over the campfire if we have a, you know, a, a fire ring or something like that. Yeah. We have... We do have an electric outdoor grill that we use, our, our Ninja. Yeah. Um, we use the Ninja Foodie um, air fryer a lot, and yeah. we have the oven and stove in here, which get get a lot of use. Yeah. Um. It th there is some challenges cooking here because I, I you know you can't use all the heating elements at one time, otherwise we blow blow fill you blow a fuse, and that's something that's been a little frustrating. But it yeah. Um. So somebody asked how we afford to live this way. Uh, for us, it's kind of a break-even cost of what it was yeah. before we got on the road. Yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, I'd say it's break, break Right, yeah. so um, no, things that make it more affordable you know, are th are things like um, we use a lot of memberships, like Thousand Trails memberships, Passport America, uh, Good Sam. All those kind of memberships give us discounts at, at RV parks, so our rent comes down. Uh, fuel discounts, we use discount cards for our fuel as well. Um, that, that help decrease that. And then we earn income through main, three main ways. I'm a freelancer, a freelance consultant for tech startups. Um, we own a writing company. Um, I'll actually be leaving that here soon. I guess I'm announcing that to people. I'll, I'll be leaving my writing company soon. And then um, we have our own websites that we, that we manage and earn income off of affiliate and uh, advertising. So just a few different ways that we earn money while we're traveling. So pretty much as long as we have internet, we use Nomad internet, and as long as we have internet, uh, we're good to go. We can we can earn an income. Yeah, but basically what we're saying is when all things come out to it, it we are breaking even, even with our um, excursions and everything. We're breaking even every month of what we did before we were on the road. Um, Okay, so you meant about uh, planning certain routes. Um, so this was the same person that had asked how far like in advance yeah. do we reserve and, and basically do we plan our routes ahead or we just wing it. So I, I do plan a general route of where we want to go. Um, sometimes those get, those get interrupted. And that's one of the reasons we like to do kind of a last minute reservations when it comes to booking RV parks and stuff because... Yeah. It is a matter of like, you know, if something comes up, we want the flexibility to be able to go somewhere else. For instance, this entire first six months was supposed to be on the West Coast, but we had that fire in the Grand, when we were in the Grand Tetons, that delayed us, kind of ruined some plans on the West Coast, and something came up on the East Coast that allowed us to go to the East, and, and because we had the flexibility to do so, we got out to the East and, and kind of did, did this stuff instead. So. We plan, I mean, I, I try to plan out like activities or, or at least like certain things we might want to do in each state yeah. as we go. We, we try to have a couple months in advance so that we, we have time to, to do some of the planning, but the fact is, is having the flexibility is actually really nice. Yeah, just uh, so we have a generalized route uh, ahead of time. Um, how much does it cost to fully fuel the bus? So I don't ever let it get to empty, but it's a 166 gallon tank. And you know, fuel diesel fuel is about, I think, four sixty nine. Where we're at right now. Yeah, so we could do the math on that. But yeah, um, let's see. Any other questions? I'm sorry if I've skipped your question or haven't gotten to yours. Um, thanks everybody for jumping on here. Uh, how do you survive a hurricane in the bus we leave? Yeah, that, that area. We've discussed that several times. <laughs> Um, the closest that we were at, we were at in Williamsburg. Um, Williamsburg, Virginia. When, when it when the uh, when that one came back kind of around, and there was flooding nearby. Nearby, but it was not to the point where we felt like we needed to leave. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you know, had we been in Florida when the hurricane came through uh, recently, we would have just packed up and left. Uh, we're we're not ones to like wait out a storm and. If if the emergency services are telling us like it's time to go, we have the luxury of having up our house wheels away. on our house. We can literally drive away. Like there was, um, never mind. I won't share that. Then. Yeah. So that's that's just uh, how we survive a hurricane uh, in the bus. Um, let's see. Another harvest host. How do you navigate? California. We haven't been to California yet in the bus, but that bus is, we bought the bus in California. Um, what else we got here? 
Do we cook in the RV? Absolutely. Do you have Starlink RV? We do. So we, um, like I said, we have Nomad internet, but we like the redundancy of being able to have more than one internet on the bus, uh, just in case we have issues with one. And so we do have Starlink RV as well. Uh, so, and that's been great. Where did we buy the bus? Uh, we bought the bus from Bus For Sale. They, they were the broker uh, for our bus. They're based in Tennessee, I believe. So busforsale.com. And then uh, the bus was actually in California. Uh, it had just over 200,000 miles on it. And, uh, and we now have roughly 220,000 miles on it. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at. I think we actually wrote down the day we started, we wrote down in our journal the exact mileage on the bus and our van to kind of get an idea. And, and our, our van just passed 103 because you mentioned that the other day. Today, yeah. yeah. Our, our bus hit, or our van hit 103,000 miles today, but I don't know where we were when we started. We wrote it down. But um, any, And that one says, okay, yeah, that was the mileage question. Okay. Um, as, oh, so we bought it from Bus for Sale, but we really bought it from Cabin Technologies, who had it before us. Um, Lauren, you saw us in Hoover, Alabama. Sorry that we didn't get a chance to meet you. We would have been happy to meet you. Um, we were at, we were in Hoover, Alabama for a little while at the Met. Let's see here. Any other questions coming in? Starlink or Wi-Fi. So yeah, we use Starlink and uh, our Wi-Fi hotspot with the Nomad internet. Um, how do you and your kids get to be alone and relax on your own? Um, this is a question we actually, we get this question quite a lot. So one of the reasons that we picked this over a, uh, a fifth wheel is every single fifth wheel that we saw had it to have have at least one or two of the kids uh, most of them two of the kids or more needed a converted convertible space so like it was like the dinette or yep. the couch or different things like that so we have these bunks that have a closed curtain and we are was one of the things we're really strict about is we keep the kit that they you, your room is your room and it's your private space and there you have they, like they have toys in their room that only they can play with um, yeah. and and it's just kind of known if that curtain is closed it, unless it's like mom or dad needing you to like leave or something like that like yeah nobody's allowed it they're not allowed in either, in each other's uh, rooms in their in their bunk pods and and um, I'm a night owl so our kids go to bed like 8 39. Uh, our kids go to bed at like 8.39, so we have two, three, four hours sometimes, depending on how late we're staying up, uh, that we get alone time. And we have two floors. I can be upstairs, he can be downstairs. We can be alone if we want to. Yeah, so that's that's how we, and the other thing is we're, uh, we're often like out in nature, and yeah. so I get a lot out of my own time. I can go on a walk uh, in the woods. Uh, we also set up the deck a lot up yeah. on top of the bus, so if I just want to get away I can go upstairs all the way up to the deck and uh, you know hang out up there if I need to. Um, another question we got is, uh, does being on the road all the time make it difficult to, make it difficult to maintain a healthy diet? Um, fortunately, I don't have to worry too much about uh, the diet. Dina makes all the food. Um, and so um, I don't know that it makes it like extra difficult. No, it, like cause, because I have everything that I, the, I mean, the only thing we don't have is like a microwave and a dishwasher. And so like I can make everything that I would have made for, you know, that I feel like we can maintain. We have a great fridge and freezer. Um, they do great keeping everything cooled and things like that. I So I have, um, the only maybe downfall is that like, Sometimes we're in like some backwards location where there's a Walmart that's 45 minutes away and that's like the only grocery store that we can find so there's not necessarily all the options but like I don't feel like it's super hard to maintain. I guess you're coming back to my spot way. Let's see, are you parked somewhere quiet? I'd have the blinds closed. Uh, we, we are somewhere quiet and um, 
the blinds haven't ever been an issue for us. Um, so we close them when we feel like we need to. Uh, one thing that's really actually great about our bus is these windows are tinted in such a way that we can see out really well and uh, a lot of people will like walk by and be staring at the bus or things like that and we can see everybody as they walk by. Uh, even if like for the majority of the time like people can't see into the bus um, but we can definitely see out of the bus. So um, this, yeah, we've the, been... the tinting has been pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. Ever have any issues with the height uh, of it? No, it is 13, five and a half, and uh, we stay on truck routes. Uh, I use the GPS and make sure that we don't go, we really don't go any, under okay. anything that's less than 13.7. Yeah, we at one point, we did have a hard time with a 9,000 9, ton uh, hill. No, 9,000 pound hill uh, was the weight limit. Yeah. And it, that took us out of, that our, um, and our GPS was just not rerouting us around. So essentially we we stopped a local and was like, hey, what is a way to get around this this hill? And that took us probably oh. 30 minutes out of the way. But we felt like that was safer to do. It, than it was. And I mean, the, the local we saw, it was a police officer. And he's like, I can't let you go down. Yeah. And I just kept saying, like, my GPS keeps routing me down this hill that has a weight limit on it that I am far above. Uh, and, and so he pointed me in the right direction. He got me around there. But. Yeah. But I mean, it was it was out of the way for sure. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, so I, you know, we're we're now a little more than thirty minutes into the, that this. Did we miss any on the top of TikTok there? Um, I I don't think we missed any there. Nope. Okay. I just but make sure I, you know, I just want to say thank you to everybody that jumped on here with us. Um, hey, Mike and Anne. Thank you for jumping on. Uh, Mike and Ann, you know where we, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be by our family that we're going, going to for Christmas. Been to the Ozarks yet? We have not been to the Ozarks. I, I grew up in Missouri. Lake of the Ozarks is kind of uh, home to me. And so we will be in the Ozarks, but we have not been there yet as our family. Surprisingly, we've been through Kansas City multiple times, but right? not, not through the Ozarks yet. How do you find driving the double-decker bus? Man, I love driving the bus. I would rather drive this than our van every day. And it freaks me out, so... Um, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, we've talked about what we do for a living. Um, let's see. And if you missed that, I do freelancing. We own a writing company, and we have some websites we earn some money on. Um, can you boondock with our bus? We can. We can last about four days off-grid boondocking. Uh, in the bus. We don't um, love it. Is our bus built for four seasons? How does it, the heat and air conditioning handle? So it was supposed to be built for all four seasons. The builder did not properly install our uh, our mini split unit. So heat and AC are both an issue. We have, um, we, we've got- We, we have other methods. We are perfectly oh. fine and safe. Uh, we've been in 30 or under 30 degree weather and yep. we've been fine. Perfectly warm, perfectly safe, so no worries. Yeah, I mean, we use, like, for heat, we've got uh, space heaters that we, we've got that heat us, and like, we have... Remember, we're only heating, we're heating less than 500 square feet, guys. It's yeah. not, it does not take a lot of power to do that. Yeah, so um, we're staying good with the with the weather. Anything else before we jump off of here? Um, let's see, there's another heat and cold one, so we've answered that. All right, I think that's it over there. Uh, do we work? Yes, uh, we do work. Um, I do freelance consulting for tech startups and we own a website, a few websites and things like that. Um, so yes, she, she, it's not that she can't drive the bus. I just don't want to. She just doesn't want to drive the bus. So she could drive it should anything happen. But we also have, uh, FMCA, which stands for, uh, Family Motor Coach Association. Should anything happen to me, they will actually send out a driver to drive our bus anywhere it would need yeah, to and go. Yeah, we, we also have another policy that um, that helps us to get it towed somewhere, so they will tow it to any yes. um, of the dealerships for this. So it, they may tow it for like um, a thousand miles. If yeah, they'll they'll tow it as far as they need to. Um, like so, so we, we have that's, options that's co if, Dane, if yeah. Dane isn't. Um, so if I'm un, if I'm unable to drive it somewhere, we but have, I have an I, I have some options to call. Yeah. 
Do the kids get tired of traveling? Kids, do you get tired of traveling? No. Sometimes. Some, we got a sometimes and then a lot of no's. Um, the kids really love playing out in the woods. That Colette just told us today that what she's most excited about when we pull up is if there is woods and if there are kids. Um, and so our current spot, I will say, she was super, super excited that we pulled up um, and was really excited when we got out. Yeah. So uh, we got another question here that says, do you have a workspace that you enjoy using given that the space is, is a custom bus? I do have a workspace at the very front of the bus. Um, we've just got a desk that kind of pops up and I use the front of the bus as my, my workspace in my office. I and, and, and really he works outside a lot. So like you I can sit out in the hammock. And yeah. You, in a ha <laughs> and like he hangs out and it's like, so it's like this like scenic, beautiful thing, like what you want. You want to be in this Zen spot to do your work. He can get that. Basically yeah, anywhere. absolutely. Um, uh, another person here said, in college I was so broke I couldn't pay the electric bill. Those were the darkest days of my life. Um, now I know it's not a question, but I do want to address that because uh, I've had similar dark days. Um, shortly before I met Dina, I was living in my truck, um, you know, down, down to my last $20 bill, um, not knowing where the next meal was going to come from. I used to scavenge uh, furniture out of, uh, out of dumpsters. Uh, I'm going to really try not to cry, but, uh, there were some really dark days in my life as well. I, I've been there. I am. Um, that was right when I was starting college. I was living in my, my truck, uh, partially by choice. I got family that would have taken me in anywhere. Um, but I, I didn't, uh, I didn't want to be a burden. I didn't want to be a burden. I didn't want to deal with my family at the time. And, and uh, I didn't have money. And so I would, I would sleep in my truck and I, I would, I would take this furniture that I would find in dumpsters, literally. And I would go and I, there was this little space under a, under a, a carport uh, at an apartment complex. And it was kind of in the back and they never bothered me, but I would take that furniture. I'd, I'd like toss it on the top of my truck. I'd drive it over there and I'd put it under the carport and I'd take like a couple pictures and post them on Craigslist and I'd, I'd sell the furniture. And that's how I, that's how I made money until I eventually moved into that apartment complex, um, with, with uh, a friend of mine with, Jesse, Jason was on at the very beginning of this. Uh, Jesse, the best best man at my wedding. Um, so I know what that's like. I I've I've been so broke that uh, I couldn't pay a lot of bills and and those kind of things. And it's part of the reason why I want to do this experience with my family because family is so important to me. And there was a time in my life when I didn't where I took advantage of that. I didn't understand how important family would be. And so um, I don't know. Why I felt like I needed to share that, but but. Yeah, we've been we've been in those spots. I've been there. I know Dina's been there. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. As uh, as parents, do you get the privacy that you'd like to get while living in such close quarters with your children? Do you uh, do you get date nights and who watches the kids? So we have family all over the country. Uh, we both come from very large families. Uh, considering, I you know, I guess in today's world, we come from large families. Uh, larger than the family we have, both of us. Uh, I'm I'm the sixth of eight. Dina's the sixth of seven, and so family all over the place. If we need date nights, we can rely on them. And and we now have friends that we would trust if we wanted a date night. We could ask them if we were in the same campground, which happens more frequently than you'd suspect. Um, that we could, we would be comfortable asking to babysit our kids. Yeah, and we do get plenty of alone time and things like that. So. Um, I think the last question was where was it built? Uh, we, we had it built in Utah. There was a company up there that we thought would be a good fit. They were terrible. And that's all I'll really say about them right now. Uh, I think that's it as far as the questions that we've seen come across. And so I think uh, 45 minutes is plenty of time for a live. Um, hopefully <laughs> everybody enjoyed this. Hopefully, Sorry, our kids were a little noisy. Hopefully we weren't too <laughs> uh, annoying. Um, but... Please, please, please continue to follow, continue to like and share our content. You know, when we started sharing everything, it was really more or less for our family to see what we're doing. Um, but, you know, there's been so many of you that have jumped on and seen our journey and, and started following us and been so encouraging that we feel like we want to give you the content you're looking for. So let us know what you're looking for. Yeah. Send us messages and uh, we will. We'll do, we'll do some more lives. Um, and so... Let us know what you want to see and what you want to know from our travels. We're total RV noobs. Uh, we're still getting getting used to it. But everybody, you guys take care. Have a great night. And uh, we will see you next time we do a live. Yeah.
Thanks, guys. Have right. a good night. See ya. Now I gotta figure out how to stop lives. <laughs> <laughs> I think this was my issue last time, too. He's up in the corner, babe. I want to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then over here. Bye, Instagram. Bye. Bye.